So now we'll have a little look at floating point representation. So this is where we look at now storing numbers with decimal places in them. So at higher level, we don't actually have to be able to, to convert these, even though if you have a little look at the PowerPoint provided, you can find out a little bit more information about how it actually works. So in the exam, you'd be given a, a binary floating point number. So it would be something like... Or something like this. So in these scenarios, this is a sort of bigger number than this one here, and um, this is a very precise number, um, but I will tell you a little bit more about that in our next lesson. But for our first example here, so we'll go for this being number one, and then this will be number two. So I'll show you these two examples of floating point representation and what you need to know for your higher exam. So first of all, we need to figure out is this number positive or is this number negative? So the first thing we look at here in number one, this number is positive. It would have a minus before it if it wasn't. So this means our sign is going to be zero because we know that's a positive number. So we don't start off with our, um, our number one at the beginning. We then go on and we check, right, how far do we move this number one, two, three, four. So we move it four positions. Okay. If we were asked in the question, because you're usually asked within the question, how many bits you can store your mantissa in. So here we go, mantissa. And then exponent. So if we were saying 16 bits to store mantissa and sine bit you would be told this in the question though it's not something you have to figure out and then you do eight bits for exponent so what we need to do is we need to write out this whole number starting right where the new decimal place should be and we write it out one zero one zero one 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 so how many numbers have we got there once we've written out our whole number one two three four five six seven we need to make this all the way up to 16 including our sign bit so we've got eight numbers all together including our sign so then we go in and we go 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 and you add on these trailing zeros at the end here and it always needs to be on this side, so it needs to be on the right-hand side if you're looking at the paper. So if you're looking at your exam paper, just make sure that it's in the one next to the sign bit. You don't put your zeros at the beginning next to the sign. It's in between the mantissa and the exponent. What we then need to do is we figured out here that we stored and we moved four places. So we use our normal exponent. So when we do our um, work at our normal binary numbers, because it's a positive number, we would have our 128, our 64, 32, 16, um, running out of space, 4, 2, 1. And we know it's 4, so it would be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So you would write out your exponent as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, and count them all up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, because we had our 8 bits to store our exponent. I'll show you how to do um, example 2, but I'm going to change example 2 slightly um, to make a negative number. So example 2 that we had here, let me just copy across so I remember what we had, is 0 0.000. .00 zero one one zero one so if we were trying to find this number but i'm going to make it the negative of this number okay we look at right what do we need to do here right our sign 
The only reason we know that this sign is negative because of the little minus at the front. So we know that it would be using two's complement. So that would be our sign one. We then look at our mantissa. Could help if I could spell. And then we're going to go on and we're going to do our next bit. So our number here moves to get it to where we want it to be at the start of the number. It goes one, two, three. But it goes negative three because it's moving to the right. Okay, because that number is moving negative three, it means for our exponent, we would be using two's complement because it's negative three. And that's what you've learned about previously. So if we write down our number, we know here, starting at the beginning, one, one, zero, one. And the rest, if we're going for our 16 bits, and here we're going for our eight bits, as I said, you'll be told that in the question, then you would write down all the trailing zeros. So that would be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so that is the easiest mark adding on those trailing zeros. Okay, and adding them on there. We then need to do our exponent where we work out, right, we've got negative three. So the first thing I do with using my eight bits, 128, or I'll move it down here actually so I can put my answer in there. 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. Just fit it in this time. And I write in, right, we've got to find positive 3. For our negative number, we invert all the bits. And we plus 1. So negative 3 is this number in our twos complement binary. So that would be there we go. So that is usually how they would sneak in a twos complement question into an exam as well. Um, so that's sometimes how you would get your mark for twos complement or sometimes it could be in an example on its own. Regardless of whether there was a, a negative here though, if I was just doing a, a normal number, um, I'll show you one quick example um, where it's still using two's complement, but the number is not negative, it's positive. So in here, we've got 0 0.010. I'll just go for this. Okay, a really small number. It moves negative one. Okay, so that's our exponent. We'll just do the sign bit we know is positive because there's no minus at the beginning. Oh, sorry, that should be a big zero, not a one. And then we got, sorry, I've gone off the page slightly. And then we've got our mantissa. I'll store using eight bits this time, just considering a different question. One, zero, zero, zero. And then here we go. So I've just got three more zeros. So that's using eight bits to store both of them. It will specify in the question though, if it's storing it, including the sign bit or just the mantissa on its own. We've then got the exponent which here is negative one because it went to the right. And remember from our previous example, if it goes to the left, then it's positive and it's normal binary. So we go 1, 2, 8, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. And we put all of our values in for positive one. Flip the ones and zeros. Plus one. And that's our two's complement number using eight bits to store it um, there. So that's three examples. So hopefully we're quite happy with how to do our um, mantis at exponent and sign bit. This would actually be one mark. And this would be one mark. And this would be one mark in the exam. So this is a very good way to get three marks in your competing exam okay and this should be something we know how to do um, and we can do so much practice with this this is something you're confident with 